إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون فقال أيضا يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وبعد Indeed, all praise and glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His aid and His forgiveness. We believe in Him and rely upon Him. We seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection and refuge against the evil of our own souls and against the evil of our impious deeds. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever is misguided, none can guide him except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we testify and we bear witness to the fact that there is no one worthy of worship except for Allah who is alone without any partner. And we also testify and bear witness to the fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's last messenger and his perfect worshipper. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. O believers, when we hear this, this is an address not to the Prophet وسلم, not to the companions per se, but to each and every one of us. O believers, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written fasting upon you. He has made fasting obligatory upon you, as it was obligatory on those before you. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may gain taqwa. You know, these next three fasts, or next three or four fasts, are going to be the longest fast of the year. So we need to remind ourselves of why, are, why is it that we're fasting? It's to gain taqwa. If at the end of this month, we're not better in our relationship between ourselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we're not better to our wives, if we're not better to our children, if we're not better to our parents, if we're not better to our colleagues and our neighbors and in people in general, then we've missed the purpose and the point of fasting, which is to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through remembering. So what is taqwa? Taqwa is putting a barrier between ourselves and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing what He has ordered us to do and staying away from His prohibitions. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu was once asked, what is taqwa? So he knew the person talking to him was a Bedouin and he wanted to give him a practical example. He said, have you ever traveled or walked on a path which had thorns? And the person said, yeah. So he said, what did you do? He said, I put my, my izab, the bottom part of my clothes up, and I walked on that path, and I avoided those thorns. So Abu Hurairah said, that is taqwa. On our journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on our journey towards Jannah, there are obstacles, challenges that we'll face, and we need to work hard to avoid those, and that is taqwa. Ali radiallahu anhu, he was asked, give me a definition of taqwa. He said, al-amalu bin tanzeel, actions according to revelation. wal min al fearing the one who is magnificent, subhanahu wa ta'ala. wal rida bil qaleel, contentment, satisfaction with, and contentment with little. wal isti'dad li yawm rahim and preparing, a preparation for the final departure. Meaning, Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times, all circumstances, and actions according to revelation. So to recap, taqwa is to do those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and to stay away from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited out of hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward and fear of His punishment. Taqwa is so important that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was once sitting with the companions and the companions said it was a very emotional moment and the Prophet Sallallahu was talking to us and the hearts were trembling and the eyes were flowing. So we asked him, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's as if you are going to be giving us some farewell advice. We may not see you again, so advise us. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أُوصِيكُمْ بِتَقْوَى Allah." I advise you all to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything in our life will be put in its proper place. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also explained the concept of taqwa in a very beautiful and comprehensive hadith. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اِتَّقِ اللَّهِ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتِ Have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. Right? Wherever you are has two meanings according to the scholars of hadith. It says, wherever you are means physical location. Wherever you are, meaning if you're in your house, you're in your workplace, you're alone, you have to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, in terms of our emotional makeup, when things are going well, we have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we're being challenged or tested, we still have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When things are going well, we're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we're being challenged, we are patient and we call and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet said, That if you make a mistake, which we all are prone to do because we're human, don't let that mistake be the end of you. Follow that mistake up with a good deed and it will wipe out that sin or that mistake that we have committed. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, And treat the people with good character. Right? So if we say, how do I know if I have taqwa or not? 
Are we fulfilling these characteristics? Are we fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in public, in private, in good times, in bad times? If and when we make a mistake, whether that mistake is against our own selves, whether a mistake is in our relationship, our interpersonal relation, like when you have an argument with our family, right? Our, and we are in the wrong. Can we go and apologize? Can we make things right? And are we treating people well? People here, وَخَالِقِ nas. It's not just Muslims, but are we treating all people well, as we would like to be treated? I have been saying that we need to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question is, how specifically can we do this? Right? Number one, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not disobey Him. Number two, do your best to always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu taught us adhkar, things that we should say from the time that we wake up in the morning till the time we go to sleep at night. Right? When we change our clothes, when we get out of our house, when we enter the bathroom, exit the bathroom before we eat. Oh, why do we do this? So that we always and constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, always be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do not reject and be ungrateful of the blessings that He has given you. And this is another benefit of fasting. Right? Alhamdulillah, everyone here has the ability to break their fast. Has the ability to quench their thirst after iftah, after maghrib time, during the time of iftah. And this is a blessing in and of itself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So appreciate the blessings that He has bestowed upon you. There are many characteristics of the people of taqwa, and as mentioned in the beginning of Surah, uh, surah Al-Baqarah, also in Surah Al-Imran, they have yaqeen in the akhir. This is a fundamental thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-An'am that on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the disbelievers from mankind and from the jinn. And He'll ask them, didn't we send you messengers? Didn't we send you books? Didn't we send you that which you needed to be successful? And they will testify against themselves. And they will say, yes, oh Allah, you did. But why didn't they believe? Well, ghurbatumul hayat dunya The life of the world distracted them from their true purpose. Right? And their real life, which is the life of the akhirah. Uh, they established the salah. No person can be a person of taqwa unless salah is a priority in his life. Salah has to be essential. As the Prophet ﷺ said, that the line between us and disbelief is salah. So we have to make salah a priority in our life. They give charity in times of prosperity and adversity. Right? Even if they don't have money, even if they don't have money, they make it a point to go and to try to help others. Because they understand that when they go out and help others, in reality, they are truly helping their own selves. Also, they are forgiving. They are forgiving. And when they get angry, right? They are forgiving. And when they commit mistakes, they ask for forgiveness. Not only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but from the creation as well. These are the people of taqwa. They humble themselves in this dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates their status in this dunya and the akhirah. So what are the rewards of taqwa? Why should we strive to be among the people of taqwa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah orders us, it's a command. Have taqwa of Allah. And know that if you have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the people of taqwa. What does it mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the people of taqwa? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to help them, to support them. It could feel like the whole world is against them. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take care of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to support them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give them success in this dunya and the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people of taqwa. If you and I, as humans, with limited knowledge, limited capabilities, limited understanding, when we love somebody, don't we try to take care of them? Don't we try to make sure they're okay? Don't we try to avoid uh, any hardship from reaching them? Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one 
who is Al Alim, all knowledgeable. Al Hakim, the all wise. Al Qadir, the one who is able to do all things. Al Hadi, the one that guides. Al Ghafoor, the one who is forgiving. Al Rahman, Al Rahim, the one who is beneficent, the one who is merciful. Saying that, I love this person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of the person. So strive to be among those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. You know, at least once or twice a week, I get emails saying that, you know, I've been out of work for such and such time. Is there any dua? Is there anything that we can do to help um, the risk, the doors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opening up on us? And this is a reality. People are going through these economic struggles. And may I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease this from all the people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open his risk to each and every one of us. Ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, after he mentioned the uh, nations of the past, he said, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْ لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَوْرِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ And if only the people of the cities had believed and had taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what would he do? We would have opened upon them the blessings from the heavens and the earth. But they denied the messengers, so we seized them for what they were earning. If we want the risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's in terms of financial risk, whether it's in terms of children, whether it's in terms of many different things, knowledge, we need to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we need to follow the path of the messengers, alayhi wa wa Right? This ayah is mentioned after the destruction of the people of Nuh, the destruction of the people of Hud, the destruction of the people of Sadiq, the destruction of the people of Nuh, and Shuraib, alayhi wa salatu wa Why? Because they rejected the oneness of Allah, and they rejected following the messengers. So Allah is telling us that if we remember Allah and we follow the path of the messengers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open his risk upon us. But that takes faith. That takes taqwa. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us all taqwa. Another thing that we can do for this specific thing, the Prophet sallallahu encouraged us that every morning, we say at least three times, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan tayyiba wa amala mutaqabbala. Oh Allah, I seek from you knowledge which is beneficial, risk or provision which is pure and plentiful, and I ask, oh Allah, I ask you to give me, give me accepted actions. Actions, the ability to perform actions which are accepted. And it's from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we say this three times every morning. You know, there's a lot of confusion in terms of what is right, what is wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, in tattaqu Allah yaj'al lakum furqana. O you who believe, O believers, if you have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're trying to do right by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the furqan. What is the furqan? The ability to distinguish between truth and falsehood. The ability to see what is right and what is wrong. And this is what taqwa will lead to, right? If we have taqwa and we say, Oh Allah, I'm not associating myself with this group or that group or this group, right? No, Oh Allah, all I want is your pleasure. Oh Allah, you guide me. And guide me to that which is most pleasing to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that He will guide us if we have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of having taqwa is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Taraq, and we know that Taraq is one of the most difficult uh, adversities that a person can experience in this worldly life, both the husband and the wife. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Talaq said, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِدْ وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُمْ وَحَسْبُهُ Whoever has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide that person with an escape from any difficulty, any adversity that they're facing. وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِدْ And He will provide for them from means which they cannot even comprehend. So we need to have taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then after that He says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّرْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُمْ وَحَسْبُهُ Whoever puts their dependence and their reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for that person. And the last benefit of taqwa we'll be talking about is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only accept the actions of the people of taqwa. So if we want our fasting, if we want our qiyam, if we want our dua, we want all of our deeds to benefit us, 
then we must strive to be among the people of taqwa. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes us all among the people of taqwa. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes us better after the month of Ramadan. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He guides us in all our affairs. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله على فضله وإحسانه وأشكره على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد. So I've been mentioning again تقوى. What does that mean? Obey Allah. Don't disobey. Remember Allah, do not forget, do not forget Him. Remember Allah, do not forget Him. And always be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings upon you. And do not reject the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set upon you. And the last thing I'll mention is we need to be better. The month of Ramadan is a month for us all to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we cannot come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we don't take care of each other. If we don't care about each other. If we're just worried about ourselves, right? This is something that will not bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we have mutual rights upon each other. So we need to be considered. We need to be understanding. We need to be open-minded. We need to be tolerant. We need to be loving and caring. As the Prophet wasallam said, none of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. And I want to leave you with this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where the Prophet wasallam mentioned that there will be people who will get nothing from their fasting except for fatigue and hunger. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He does not make us among those people. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He allows us to maximize this month and make this month a means of coming closer to Him. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His beautiful names and attributes to make us among those that have taqwa. Accept, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting, our qiyam, our dua, our tawbah, and all of our good deeds. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease the suffering of people all over the world. قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتاب العزيز بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا ظلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رغوب رحيم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأطويد أمري إلى الله إن الله نصير بالعباد أقيم الصلاة